Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Roger Moore. Sir Roger George Moore was an English actor. He is best known for having played secret agent James Bond in seven feature films from 1973 to 1985. He also played Simon Templer in the television series The Saint from 1962 to 1969. Moore took over the role of Bond from Sean Connery in 1972 and made his first appearance as 007 in Live and Let Die, the longest-serving Bond. He went on to portray the spy in six more films. Appointed a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador in 1991, Moore was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II in 2003. 4. Services to Charity In 2007 he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his work on television and in film. In 2008, the French government appointed Moore a commander of the Order des Arts Aide des Lettres. Early life Roger Moore was born on 14 October 1927 in Stockwell, London. He was the only child of George Alfred Moore, a policeman, and Lillian Lily Pope. His mother was born in Calcutta, India, but was English. He attended Battersea Grammar School, but was evacuated to Holdsworthy, Devon, during the Second World War and attended Launceston College in Cornwall. He was further educated at Dr. Challoner's Grammar School in Amersham, Buckinghamshire. Moore apprenticed at an animation studio, but was fired after he made a mistake with some animation cells. His father investigated a robbery at the home of film director Brian Desmond Hurst, which led to Moore being introduced to the director and hired as an extra for the 1945 film Caesar and Cleopatra. While there, Moore attracted an off-camera female fan following, and Hearst decided to pay Moore's fees at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Moore spent three terms at RADA, where he was a classmate of his future Bond co-star Lois Maxwell, the original Miss Moneypenny. During this time there, he developed the mid-Atlantic accent and relaxed demeanor that would become his screen persona. At 18, shortly after the end of the Second World War, Moore was conscripted for national service. On 21 September 1946, he was commissioned into the Royal Army Service Corps as a second lieutenant. He was given the service number 372,394. He was an officer in the Combined Services Entertainment section and eventually became a captain, commanding a small depot in West Germany. He later looked after entertainers for the armed forces passing through Hamburg. Early work, 1945-1959 in the early 1950s, Moore worked as a model, appearing in print advertisements for knitwear and a wide range of other products such as toothpaste, an element that many critics have used as typifying his lightweight credentials as an actor. In his book Last Man Standing, Tales from Tinseltown, Moore states that his first television appearance was on 27 March 1949 in The Governess by Patrick Hamilton, a live broadcast, and he played the minor part of Bob Drew. Other actors in the show included Clive Morton and Betty Ann Davies. MGM Although Moore signed a seven-year contract with MGM in 1954, the films that followed were not successes and, in his own words, at MGM. RGM, Roger George Moore, was NBG, no bloody good. He appeared in Interrupted Melody, a biographical movie about opera singer Marjorie Lawrence's recovery from polio, in which he was billed third under Glenn Ford and Eleanor Parker as Lawrence's brother Cyril. That same year, he played a supporting role in The King's Thief starring Anne Blythe, Edmund Purdim 
David Niven and George Sanders. In the 1956 film Diane, Moore was billed third again. This time under Lana Turner and Pedro Armendariz, in a 16th century period piece set in France. With Moore playing Prince Henry, the future king, Moore was released from his MGM contract after two years following the film's critical and commercial failure. Warner Brothers after that, he spent a few years mainly doing one-shot parts in television series, including an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents in 1959 titled The Avon Emeralds. He signed another long-term contract to a studio, this time to Warner Brothers. In 1959 he took the lead role in The Miracle, a version of the play Das Miracle for Warner Brothers showcasing Carol Baker as a nun. The part had been turned down by Dirk Bogard. That same year, Moore was directed by Arthur Hillering, The Angry Young Man, an episode of the television series The Third Man starring Michael Rennie as criminal mastermind. Harry Lyme, the role portrayed by Orson Welles in the film version. Ivanhoe, 1958-1959 Moore was the eponymous hero, Sir Wilfred of Ivanhoe, in the 1958-59 series Ivanhoe, a loose adaptation of the 1819 romantic novel by Sir Walter Scott set in the 12th century. During the era of Richard the Lionheart, delving into Ivanhoe's conflict with Prince John, Shot mainly in England at Elstree Studios and Buckinghamshire. Some of the show was also filmed in California due to a partnership with Columbia Studios Screen Gems. Aimed at younger audiences, the pilot was filmed in color, a reflection of its comparatively high budget for a British children's adventure series of the period. But subsequent episodes were shot in black and white. Christopher Lee and John Schlesinger were among the show's guest stars, and series regulars included Robert Brown as the Squire Girth, Peter Gilmore as Waldo Ivanhoe, Andrew Kerr as villainous Prince John, and Bruce Seaton as noble King Richard. Moore suffered broken ribs and a battle axe blow to his helmet while performing some of his own stunts filming a season of 39 half-hour episodes and later reminisced, I fell to complete Charlie riding around in all that armor and damned stupid plumed helmet. I felt like a medieval fireman. The Alaskans, 1959-1960 Moore's next television series involved playing the lead as Silky Harris for the ABC, Warner Brothers 1959-60 Western The Alaskans, with co-stars Dorothy Provine as Rocky, Jeff York as Reno and Ray Danton as Nifty. The show ran for a single season of 37-hour-long episodes on Sunday nights, though set in Skagway, Alaska. With a focus on the Klondike Gold Rush in around 1896, the series was filmed in the hot studio lot at Warner Brothers in Hollywood with the cast costumed in fur coats and hats. Moore found the work highly taxing and his off-camera affair with Provine complicated matters even more. He subsequently appeared as the questionable character 14 Carrot John in the two-part episode. Right off the boat of the ABC, WB crime drama The Roaring Twenties, with Rex Reason, John Dana. Gary Vinson and Dorothy Provine, appearing in a similar role, but with a different character name. Maverick, 1961-1960 In the wake of the Alaskans, Moore was cast as Beau Maverick, an English-accented cousin of frontier gamblers Brett Maverick, Bart Maverick and Brent Maverick in the much more successful ABC, WB Western series Maverick. 
Sean Connery was flown over from Britain to test for the part, but turned it down. Moore appeared as the character in 14 episodes after Garner had left the series. At the end of the previous season, wearing some of Garner's costumes, while filming The Alaskans, he had already recited much of Garner's dialogue. Since the Klondike series frequently recycled Maverick scripts, changing only the names and locales, he had also filmed a Maverick episode with Garner two seasons earlier in which Moore played a different character in a retooling of Richard Brinsley Sheridan's 1775 comedy of manners play entitled The Rivals. In the course of the story, Moore's and Garner's characters switch names on a bet, with Moore consequently identifying himself as Brett Maverick through most of the episode. Moore's debut as Beau Maverick occurred in the first episode of the 1960-61 fourth season. The Bundle from Britain, one of four episodes in which he shared screen time with Cousin Bart. Robert Altman wrote and directed, Bolt from the Blue, an episode featuring Will Hutchins as a frontier lawyer similar to his character in the series Sugarfoot and Red Dog, found Bo mixed up with vicious bank robbers Lee Van Cleef and John Carradine. Kathleen Crowley was Moore's leading lady in two episodes, and others included Marla Powers. Roxanne Barad, Faye Spain, Mary Anders, Andrew Martin and Jean Cooper. Upon leaving the series, Moore cited a decline in script quality since the Garner era as the key factor in his decision to depart. Ratings for the show were also down. The Saint, 1962-1969 New grade cast more a Simon Templar in a new adaptation of The Saint, based on the novels by Leslie Charteris. Moore said in an interview in 1963 that he wanted to buy the rights to Leslie Charteris' character and the trademarks. He also joked that the role was supposed to have been meant for Sean Connery, who was unavailable. The television series was made in the UK with an eye to the American market, and its success there made Moore a household name. By early 1967 he had achieved international stardom. The series also established his suave, quipping style which he carried forward to James Bond. Moore went on to direct several episodes of the later series, which moved into color in 1967. The St. Ran from 1962 for six seasons and 118 episodes, tying The Avengers as the longest-running series of its kind on British television. Moore grew increasingly tired of the role, and was keen to branch out. He made two films immediately after the series ended, Crossplot, a lightweight spy caper, movie, and the more challenging The Man Who Haunted Himself directed by Basil Dearden. It gave Moore the opportunity to demonstrate a wider versatility than the role of Simon Templar had allowed. In 2004 Moore said of the man who haunted himself, it was one of the few times I was allowed to act. Many say my best role was in the man who haunted himself. Being a modest actor, I won't disagree. The Persuaders, 1971-1972 Television lured Moore back to star alongside Tony Curtis in The Persuaders. The show featured the adventures of two millionaire playboys across Europe. Moore was paid the then unheard of sum of £1 million for a single series, making him the highest paid television actor in the world. Lou Grade claimed in his autobiography Still Dancing, that Moore and Curtis didn't hit it off all that well. Curtis refused to spend more time on set than was strictly necessary, while Moore was always willing to work overtime. According to the DVD commentary, neither Roger Moore, an uncredited co-producer, nor Robert S. Baker, 
the credited producer, ever had a contract other than a handshake with Lou Grade. They produced the entire 24 episodes without a single written word guaranteeing that they would ever be paid. The series failed in the United States, where it had been pre-sold to ABC, which Curtis put down to its showing at the Saturday 10 p.m. slot, but it was successful in Europe and Australia. In Germany, where the series was aired under the name Dicefy, it became a hit through especially amusing dubbing which only barely used translations of the original dialogue. In Britain it was also popular, although on its premiere on the ITV network, it was beaten in the ratings by repeats of Monty Python's Flying Circus on BBC One. Channel 4 repeated both The Avengers and The Persuaders in 1995. Since then, The Persuaders has been issued on DVD, while in France, where the series had always been popular, the DVD releases accompanied a monthly magazine of the same name. James Bond Films Due to his commitment to several television shows, in particular The Saint, Roger Moore was unavailable for the James Bond films for a considerable time. His participation in The Saint was as actor, producer and director, and he also became involved in developing the series The Persuaders. In 1964, he made a guest appearance as James Bond in the comedy series Mainly Millicent. Moore stated in his autobiography My Word is My Bond that he had neither been approached to play the character in Dr. No, nor did he feel that he had ever been considered. It was only after Sean Connery had declared in 1966 that he would not play Bond any longer that Moore became aware that he might be a contender for the role. After George Lazenby was cast in 1969's On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and Connery played Bond again in Diamonds Are Forever, Moore did not consider the possibility until it seemed clear that Connery had stepped down as Bond for good. At that point Moore was approached, and he accepted producer Albert Broccola's offer in August 1972. In his autobiography Moore writes that he had to cut his hair and lose weight for the role. Although he resented having to make those changes, he was finally cast as James Bond in Live and Let Die. After Live and Let Die, Moore continued to portray Bond in The Man with the Golden Gun, The Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker, For Your Eyes Only, Octopussy, and A View to a Kill. Moore was the longest-serving James Bond actor, having spent 12 years in the role, having made seven of the Eon production Bond films in a row. Moore was the oldest actor to have played Bond, he was 45 in Live and Let Die, and 58. When he announced his retirement on 3 December 1985, Moore is also tied, with Sean Connery as the actor who played Bond in the most movies. They both appeared in seven Bond movies. Moore's Bond was very different from the version created by Ian Fleming. Screenwriters like George MacDonald Fraser provided scenarios in which Moore was cast as a seasoned, debonair playboy who would always have a trick or gadget in stock when he needed it. This was designed to serve the contemporary taste of the 1970s. Moore's version of Bond was also known for his sense of humor and witty one-liners. Moore himself said, My personality is different from previous Bonds. I'm not the cold-blooded killer type, which is why I play it mostly for laughs. In 1987 he hosted Happy Anniversary 007, 25 years of James Bond. Other films during the Bond era during Moore's Bond period he starred in 13 other films, beginning with a thriller featuring Susanna York, entitled Gold. He portrayed an adventurer in Africa opposite Lee Marvin in Shout at the Devil, a commando, with Richard Burton and Richard Harris in the unorthodox action film The Wild Geese, 
a counter-terrorism expert opposite Anthony Perkins in the thriller North Sea Hijack. In the Cannonball Run he spoofs his fame by playing a millionaire so obsessed with Roger Moore that he had had plastic surgery to look like him. He even made a cameo as Chief Inspector Clouseau, posing as a famous movie star. In Curse of the Pink Panther, Moore was widely criticized for making three movies in South Africa under the apartheid regime during the 1970s. Moore also made two World War II films in this period, both with all-star casts of character actors, and both co-starring David Niven. 1. An actioner called The Sea Wolves is based on the true story of a March 1943 event in British India and Portuguese Goa, in which a group of retired members of the Calcutta Light Horse Colonel'd by David Niven's character were assist regular British Army operatives, played by Moore and Gregory Peck, in destroying German ships in neutral Mormugau Harbour, all the time surrounded by German spies and Indian nationalist intrigue. Trevor Howard, Patrick McNee, and Barbara Kellerman also co-star, with a who's who lineup of British character actors. The other film, Escape to Athena, is a heist adventure set in wartime Greece, and stars Telisa Vallas, David Niven, and features mostly American character actors, including Elliot Gould, Stephanie Powers, Richard Roundtree, Sonny Bono, and Italian bombshell Claudia Cardinale. Roger Moore plays a charming former Austrian antiquities dealer turned crooked camp commandant, tasked with guarding Greek antiquities desired by the Third Reich, and also guarding the collection of archaeologists who are being forced to work to find and recover these objects, but he has other plans for the treasure he guards and for the people under his watch. Post James Bond career, 1986-2017 Moore did not act on screen for five years after he stopped playing Bond. In 1990 he appeared in several films, and in the writer-director Michael Feeney Callan's television series My Riviera, and starred in the film Bed and Breakfast which was shot in 1989 and also had a large role in the 1996 film The Quest. In 1997 he starred as the chief in Spice World. At the age of 73, he played a flamboyant homosexual man in Boat Trip, with Cuba Gooding Jr. The British comedy show Spitting Image once had a sketch in which their latex likeness of Moore, when asked to display emotions by an off-screen director, did nothing but raise an eyebrow. Moore himself stated that he thought the sketch was funny, and took it in good humor. Indeed, he had always embraced the eyebrows gag wholeheartedly, slyly claiming that he only had three expressions as Bond, right eyebrow raised left eyebrow raised and eyebrows crossed when grabbed by jaws. Spitting image continued the joke, featuring a Bond film spoof, The Man with the Wooden Delivery, with Moore's puppet receiving orders from Margaret Thatcher to kill Mikhail Gorbachev. Other comedy shows at that time ridiculed Moore's acting, with Rory Bremner once claiming to have had a death threat from one of his irate fans following one such routine. In 2009, Moore appeared in an advertisement for the post office. He also played the role of a secret agent in the Victoria Wood Christmas special on BBC One show. Over the festive period in the same year, filming all his scenes in the London Eye, his mission was to eliminate another agent whose file photo looks like Pierce Brosnan. In 2010 Moore provided the voice of a talking cat called Lazenby in the film Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore which contained several references to, and parodies of, Bond films. In 2011 Moore co-starred in the film A Princess for Christmas with Katie McGrath and Sam Hugan, and in 2012 he took to the stage for a series of seven evenings within UK theatres and 
In November, guest hosted Have I Got News For You. Moore's last on-screen performance was in 2013. A brief cameo is himself in Incompatibles. First feature-length film of the then 21-year-old French director Paolo Seidel in Petrini. In 2015, Moore was named one of GQ's 50 best-dressed British men. In October 2015, Moore read Hans Christian Andersen's Little Klaus and Big Klaus for the children's fairy tales at Giving Tales in Aid of UNICEF, together with a number of other British celebrities, including Michael Caine, Ewan McGregor, Joan Collins, Stephen Fry, Joanna Lumley, David Walliams, Charlotte Rampling and Paul McKenna. Humanitarian work Moore's friend Audrey Hepburn had impressed him with her work for UNICEF, and consequently he became a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador in 1991. He was the voice of Father Christmas or Santa in the 2004 UNICEF cartoon The Fly Who Loved Me. Moore was involved in the production of a video for Peter that protests against the production and wholesale of foie gras. Moore narrates the video, his assistance in this situation, and being a strong spokesman against foie gras, led to the department store Selfridges agreeing to remove foie gras from their shelves. Dorothy Squires In 1952, Moore met the Welsh singer Dorothy Squires, who was 12 years his senior, and Van Steyn and Moore divorced the following year. Squires and Moore were married in New York. They lived in Bexley, Kent, after their marriage. They moved to the United States in 1954 to develop their careers, but tensions developed in the marriage due to their age differences. And Moore's infatuation with starlet Dorothy Provine, and they moved back to the United Kingdom in 1961. Squires suffered a series of miscarriages during their marriage, and Moore later said the outcome of their marriage might have been different if they had been able to have children. In their tempestuous relationship Squires smashed a guitar over his head, and after learning of his affair with the Italian actress Luisa Mattioli, who became Moore's third wife, Moore said that, she threw a brick through my window. She reached through the glass and grabbed my shirt and she cut her arms doing it. The police came and they said, Madam, you're bleeding, and she said, It's my heart that's bleeding. Squires intercepted letters from Mattia Lita Moore and planned to include them in her autobiography. But the couple won injunctions against the publication in 1977, which led Squires to unsuccessfully sue them for loss of earnings. The numerous legal cases launched by Squires led her to be declared a vexatious litigant in 1987. Moore paid Squires hospital bills after her cancer treatment in 1996, and upon her death in 1998. Luisa Mattioli with wife Louisa Mattioli, in 1961, while filming The Rape of the Sabine Women in Italy. Moore left Squires for the Italian actress Louisa Mattioli. Squires refused to accept their separation, and sued Moore for loss of conjugal rights. But Moore refused the court's order to return to Squires in 28 days. Squires also smashed windows at a house in France where Moore and Mattia Lee were living, and unsuccessfully sued actor Kenneth Moore for libel, as Moore had introduced Moore and Mattia Lee at a charity event as Mr. Roger Moore and his wife. Moore and Mattia Lee lived together until 1969, when Squires finally granted him a divorce, after they had been separated for seven years. At Moore and Matarola's marriage in April 1969 at the Caxton Hall in Westminster, London, a crowd of 600 people were outside, with women screaming his name. Moore had three children, with Mattioli, actress daughter Deborah, two sons, Geoffrey and Christian, 
Jeffrey is also an actor and appeared alongside his father in the 1976 film Sherlock Holmes in New York. In later life he co-founded Hush Restaurant in Mayfair, London, with Jamie Barber. Jeffrey and his wife Lilu have two daughters. Moore's youngest son, Christian, is a film producer. Political Alignment on politics Moore stated he was a conservative and thought that conservatism is the way to run a country. The BBC listed Moore prior to the 2001 UK general election as a celebrity backer of the British Conservative Party. In 2011, Moore gave his support to Conservative Prime Minister David Cameron regarding his policy on the European Union stating, despite his conservative politics, Moore retained membership of the entertainment and media trade union BECTU until his death. Having joined as an apprentice animation technician before his acting career took off, at his death he was the union's longest-serving member. Tax Exile Moore became a tax exile from the United Kingdom in 1978, originally to Switzerland, and divided his year between his three homes, an apartment in Monte Carlo, Monaco, a chalet in Crans Montana, Switzerland, and a home in the south of France. Moore became a resident of Monaco, having been appointed a goodwill ambassador of Monaco by Prince Albert II for his efforts in internationally promoting and publicizing the principality. Moore was scathing of the Russian population in Monaco, saying that, I'm afraid we're overstuffed with Russians. All the restaurant menus are in Russian now. Moore was vocal in his defense of his tax exile status, saying that in the 1970s he had been urged by his accountants, agents, and lawyers, that moving abroad was essential, because, you would never be able to save enough to ensure that you had any sort of livelihood if you didn't work as a result of the punitive taxation rates imposed on unearned income. Moore said in 2011 that his decision to live abroad was, not about tax. That's a serious part of it. I come back to England often enough not to miss it, to see the changes, to find some of the changes good. I paid my taxes at the time that I was earning a decent income. So I've paid my due. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.